Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Georgia Bowl for tonight's second round semifinal game between the University of Kansas Jayhawks and the University of Maryland Terrapins. Coach, we're about to watch the magical weekend from 2002, the National Championship weekend. I'm just curious, before we even get to the to most of these games here, do you ever allow yourself the luxury of make, making some popcorn and throwing one of these in and, and checking out the game in context? You know, it's funny. I've never really watched either game, the semifinals or the finals, uh, completely. Uh, it's just, you know, it's, it's one of those things where we won, obviously, and then you had to move on quickly right after the season was over, recruiting or, or whatever. So you, you just had to, uh, you, you know, and so I go back and I look at, I remember, you know, I, the thing is, it's in your mind, the Houston game. Kansas comes out red hot in this game. Yeah. This is a prolific Kansas team, much like yourselves, uh, the Maryland team, a lot of future pros. Yeah, you know, Heinrich played, what, 12 years in the league or something like that. And Collison was a great player. Those guys, uh, they were good. And uh, they were ranked number one in the country uh, for a lot of the uh, year. And we weren't. You know, Heinrich versus Blake was a heck of a matchup right there. And of course, you know, they played good defense. Roy Williams knows what he's doing. We played good defense, but yet both teams scored a lot of points. And, you know, we got down early in this, but, you know, typical Juan Dixon, you know, he, he was going to make sure that we were going to come back. You know, there was no doubt about it. And, you know, when you have players, you know, like a Wilcox, like a Baxter inside, we really had a good outside-inside uh, combination with this team. Lonnie got himself in some foul trouble in this game, right. picked up two quick ones. Um, and one of the things that seemed to really be a, a huge storyline for this team, the, the play off the bench of guys like Taj Holden, Ryan Randall, yeah. uh, there wasn't much drop off, as great as Lonnie was. I know, it was amazing. You know, the, you, you talk about a luxury for a coach. You know, Lonnie gets in foul trouble. Normally, that'd be a crisis right away that early in the first half. But, you know, you, you put in Taj Holden, you put in Ryan Randall. And like you said, there, there's not much of a drop off. Plus, those guys were, were players. In other words, this this stage was not too big for those guys, which a lot of the times, your your, your so-called backup players, they're, they're good during the regular season, whatever. But you get to this level, all of a sudden, it, it's not the same. Well, if Juan was the best player on the court, this guy, Chris Wilcox, the second best player on the court. Yeah, he, we talk about the amount of money he made for himself that week, this weekend. Well, the, the three weeks, really. He was the best inside player in the country uh, in terms of his physical ability, his timing, his ability to run the court, all those things which I guess the NBA guys look at. And he could do all that. And then what, what that did, the way we ran transition there, they would sprint. Baxter, you know, uh, Chris Wilcox, uh, Taj, they'd sprint for the rim. And then when you had Juan with the ball, you had to cover, you know, the, the rim. And so all of a sudden Juan's open for that jumper right on the three foot line in transition. And that, that really was a big part of uh, our transition offense. You took the first lead at 26-25. Juan had 13 of the first 26 points. Uh, and he was the guy, as you said. I mean, you're down 13-2, yeah. and he makes a steal, a layup, and he's burying a three-pointer off of a, off of a, a flex. Yeah, I'll, I'll never forget the uh, the, the timeout down 13-2. to two. I was going to kill everybody. <laughs> and Juan got in the huddle, and he killed everybody for me. But he could do that because he went out, and I yeah. think he hit back-to-back -back threes or something to get us uh, right back in the game. And there, there's another yeah, luxury. Our, our big guys could shoot the ball pretty well. Like Todd Holden was a great shooter from the uh, three-point line. And, you know, that always helps. And, you know, when you, when you have no one on the court where they can completely lay off of, that really helps your offense. It was an interesting stretch in the first half when you really got it going. Uh, it's always interesting to see a team that's primarily a man-to-man -man team like Kansas be chased into a 2-3 zone. Yeah, uh, they just they, they didn't have a lot of good match. I kind of like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's so, you know, because you know it's not their best defense and but yet they felt they couldn't cover us and you know, just, just things like that. We we knew how to get the ball to the right guys. In other words, when Juan was open, he got the ball and it, nobody questioned that on the team, which is part of the reason we we were a great basketball team that year. And Juan was willing to also give it up, believe it or not. You know, I always kid Juan about his assist total, given all the great totals he has. Uh, but he, he knew how to get the ball to the right guys. And, you know, I, I always felt like for the, from the 10 minute mark in the first half to about the 10 minute mark in the second half, those 20 minutes were as good a basketball as we played all year. It was nice to do it in that, that stage.